Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Electrical Concepts. My name is Avikyan Roy. So today I am going to continue my discussion on different voltage control techniques. So as in my previous lecture, uh, that is lecture number 5, I have shown uh, different voltage control techniques like excitation control, control using tap changing transformer. Okay, so today I am going to show that how the voltage regulation or the control can be performed using synchronous condenser. So what is synchronous condenser? It is nothing but one synchronous motor that can be driven in overexcited state under no load. Then it will act as a condenser or one capacitor because that in that case it supplies leading reactive power that is what is called synchronous condenser okay so by installing the synchronous condenser at the receiving side you can perform the voltage control all right so how by varying the dc acceleration of the synchronous motor the leading reactive power can be varied all right so that leading reactive power can be useful uh, to perform the compensation of the lagging reactive power consumed by the line either partly or fully so by varying the dc acceleration you if you can control your leading reactive power that can either partly or fully compensate the lagging reactive power that is being consumed by the transmission line hence the voltage drop can be controlled voltage drop in the line can be decreased okay so if the voltage drop is decreased definitely what does that what does that signify the current drawn by the load will also be reduced because drop is reduced okay so definitely what will happen the receiving and voltage can be controlled or receiving and voltage can be improved okay so this thing can be uh, is easier to explain by this phaser diagram see here without synchronous condenser and with synchronous condenser so first of all forget about this part with synchronous condenser you see here this v2 is your receiving inside voltage and that needs to be kept constant at a reference or the at a desired value with permissible variation which is plus minus six percent all right now here the capacitive a capacitive effect of the transmission line is neglected okay so here it is assumed that the current the current is lagging the voltage okay so here current is lagging i2 is the load current or the receiving inside current so this is the phasor diagram and this v1 is the sending inside voltage without synchronous condenser all right and if you follow the locus of this v1 or okay v1 is this this line is v1 so if you follow the locus or if you make the projection so v1 will come somewhere here so this length this length signifies your v1 this is the reference line so in the reference this length signifies the v1 now for example forget about this part this phasor diagram i have just drawn to show you what happens when suddenly load gets changed okay suppose load is increased so as we all know if load is increased the receiving inside voltage will decrease how see here now i2 dash is the load current and see if you compare i2 dash is higher than i2 so i2 dash is that means load is increased so the moment load is increased suddenly it happens right but by that time also your sending inside voltage still remains at v1 because it is not possible to suddenly uh, change the sending inside voltage okay so it it will take some time to get to another uh, required value in order to maintain the receiving side at a constant value okay so although the load is suddenly changed that v1 is still i mean the sending inside voltage is still remaining at v1 it is not changed although it is yet to be changed but at just that point v1 is not changed okay so if supply voltage is constant for that 
uh, short span of time when already your load is increased what will happen if you follow the phasor diagram your drops will be larger because current is increased see here the drop overall drop impedance drop is this line but here the impedance drop is see it is now larger so as a result your receiving end side voltage will be very less see v2 was the initial uh, re receiving end side voltage and the moment load is increased now it is only v2 dash only this much almost half so this is how by phasor diagram you can prove that how by increasing load uh, the voltage reduction takes place with the uh, increment in the load current okay so for the sake of showing uh, this thing uh, by phasor diagram i just uh, drawn i just drew this uh, phasor diagram so forget about this phasor diagram now now just concentrate on this phasor diagram and that phasor diagram okay so without synchronous condenser and with synchronous condenser see here now suppose the system is at this position and you need to improve your uh, voltage regulation okay so the moment you connect the synchronous condenser it will take the current it will draw the current and that current will be capacitive in nature okay so it is almost 90 degree although some loss also takes take place in the condenser but that can be neglected so it is completely leading the supply voltage by 90 degree so now if you follow the phasor diagram now your overall resultant current will be i2 dash and if you compare i2 and i2 dash there's a difference i2 dash is lesser than your i2 so now if your current is reduced definitely your voltage will be reduced voltage drop i mean voltage drop will be reduced see initially the voltage drop was this line but now the voltage drop is this line so if you compare your voltage drop is reduced so if your voltage drop is reduced obviously sending inside voltage will be decreased what does that signify initially to maintain a value v2 to maintain this amount of receiving end side voltage you requ you required v1 amount of sending end side voltage but now for maintaining same amount of receiving end side voltage you require lesser amount of sending end side voltage see v1 dash is lesser than v1 if you compare this length if you compare this length and that length so v1 dash is much lesser than v1 so it it actually signifies that your voltage regulation is improved regulation is nothing but v1 minus v2 by v2 in case of in without synchronous condenser and with synchronous condenser it is v1 dash minus v2 by v2 so as because v1 dash is lesser than v1 so regulation uh, in presence of synchronous condenser is, le is lesser than the regulation in, in absence of synchronous condenser so it is always desirable to achieve uh, as less as possible to achieve the uh, voltage regulation as less as possible okay so it actually improves your voltage regulation all right so synchronous condenser has many advantages in my first lecture you uh, have noticed that i have shown the power effect improvement in, in, in using synchronous condenser now i am showing the voltage regulation uh, or the regul or the voltage control using synchronous condenser so synchronous condenser has many advantages and it is one of the best techniques uh, by use by which we can uh, improve the voltage uh, voltage okay or the voltage control so uh, this is the uh, point what i wanted to explain and one more thing one last thing so voltage regulation is improved that is okay now what if your ic is absent what if your volt uh, synchronous condenser is absent so for example now just uh, focus on this phasor diagram okay suppose suddenly your ic is removed suddenly suppose you have removed your voltage uh, synchronous condenser what will happen so still v1 dash uh, still your sending end side voltage is at this value v1 dash because it will take some time to uh, change to any other desired value so the moment you remove your synchronous condenser this component is gone so now 
this resultant current will no more exist again the current will come back to this value i2 and the moment i current comes back to this value in presence of v1 dash which is yet to be changed but not yet changed what will happen again your voltage will fall and here v2 you can see but that time it will no more be v2 it will be something less okay so that will happen but again the moment you again connect the synchronous condenser this component component will come into picture again your resultant current will be reduced again the voltage will come back to its reference value so this is how by using synchronous condenser you can improve your uh, voltage regulation and also you can keep the uh, your receiving end side voltage at a constant value okay because if you compare this two here also receiving end side voltage is v2 here also it is v2 but here for achieving v2 you need larger amount of v, uh, sending end side voltage okay for maintaining v2 at receiving end side you need at least v1 you need v1 amount of voltage at the sending end side but here it is v1 dash so in absence of synchronous condenser v1 dash alone cannot maintain a receiving end side voltage at v2 okay it will result in uh, a lesser value at the receiving end side because you need v1 to maintain v2 at the receiving end side okay v1 dash cannot alone uh, maintain a v2 at the receiving end side for that it needs synchronous condenser all right so the moment you connect the synchronous condenser again the voltage will come back to its reference or the desired value but the moment you disconnect it it will fall so i hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have liked it please comment please share this and subscribe to my channel thank you